I'm Catherine Sutherland. And I'm Nakia Baris. We encourage you to watch The Michael Finkley Show on Roku TV and YouTube. Don't forget to click and subscribe. If I can make it through the night Just to see a brighter side Cause I've been working all my life Just to make it If I can make it through the night Just to see a brighter side Cause I've been working all my life Welcome to the Michael Finkley Show Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. And so, talking with some people, I'm a talker sometimes, but I like to listen as well, or listening and talking. And so, we had the conversation of really knowing you as a person, right? How well do you know yourself? Hmm, I'll wait. How well do you know yourself, right? And so, as me and this person were talking, they were saying that they know this and know that and everything else in between. But as conversation continued, we really came down to it to where we don't really truly 100% know ourselves. We know ourselves at that current moment. What we went through in our past, right? The situations have shaped us and molded us to the person we are currently, present day. But the future our future selves we don't know and this is why we learn every day right life is meant to be learned learn about self learn about different things that are happening in the world things in that nature including yourself so take time every day to learn something different about yourself and i promise you you will surprise yourself as i'm learning i'm getting older i'll be 32 this year god willing and every time, every year, I learn something, things that I used to put up with, I don't put up with anymore, right? Things, some things I say, I don't say anymore. Things, things I used to do, I don't do anymore. But that comes with time and it comes with wisdom. So learning about yourself is a daily thing. So open your mind up to possibilities. Never be a person that is closed-minded to different things. Only through what you experience is when you truly can learn. And when, even when the day before we die, that minute before we die, we are still learning. We're still learning. So learn something. So learn something about yourself today. I challenge you. Learn something about yourself. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing, this thing we call life. I am so excited about our guest today. Oh, I'm so excited, y'all. We have my awesome newest friend. We have Thomas Anthony Jones with us. You may remember him from uh, Good Trouble or This Is Us from NBC. I tell you, he just lays an all down on the line and tells his story like no other. He is a jokester. I tell you, he is funny. He is funny. But you're going to see. And then also, too, I found this awesome Fantasia personator online. And I said, I got to have him on. I have to have him on. And Javelin DeBose is with us. And I tell you, oh, what a talent. And he also performs. So another great show you don't want to miss. Join us. We'll be right back. Coming up, we have Thomas Anthony Jones with us. We'll be right back. On the next Michael Finkley. You loved her as Thelma Evans in Good Times. Now Finkley has her. Bernadette Stannis is with us. Next Finkley. Friday. Looking for a mentoring program for your young male between the age of 6 and 18 in Columbia, South Carolina? Well, look no further. Big Homie, Little Homie Mentoring Program is the program for you. Under the leadership of Mr. Jamal Stroud, Big Homie, Little Homie is a 503C3 nonprofit organization that caters and mentors at-risk youth that come from single-parent homes. The organization caters to young males between the ages of 6 and 18 within the greater Columbia area. The organization is devoted to shaping and molding their life into great men of society. Big Homie Little Homie organizes male gatherings, discussions, and even educational assistance devoted to guiding and leading them into a positive light. 
making a positive attitude will help in transforming a life regardless of what is experienced in life. For more information on Big Homie, Little Homie Mentoring Program, visit our social media outlets, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Now, our next guest, he is an actor. You, I know you've seen him on your screen from way back in the day to current, and he's also a producer. Here is my good friend, Thomas Anthony Jones. TJ, how are you? I'm on the Michael Finkley Show. Hey, you here, bro? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? I am super well. Thank you for being with us today. Of course, of course, of course. What are we going to talk about? How was your day today? My, my day was really, really eventful. Uh, believe it or not, I'm tired as I'll get up. But when I, okay. when I looked at my calendar and I was reminded I was going to talk with Thomas Anthony Jones, I'm like, you know, I want to perk up because this dude has perk. I can't him out perk me. <laughs> That's what I said to myself. You can win. You can win. I don't want to. I don't want to challenge you. You could win. Okay, good, man. Good. Well, I'm excited to be here. Like I said, um, uh, you're always into a lot of great things and highlighting a bunch of cool folks. And so I'm just happy that you asked me so I can join that esteemed list. So thanks, man. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Definitely. So Thomas, TJ, excuse me, TJ, um, when it came to entertainment, was that always your goal growing up? You know what? Growing up in Cleveland, um, we spent a lot, a lot of time comparing ourselves to other cool places because, you know, mm-hmm. we always felt like we were never good. Well, I can't say that we always felt like that, but I always felt like Cleveland was looked upon as a place where you just, you know, live your life, do whatever. You go to school and then you work at a bank or start a family and things like that. And I never wanted to do that. Um, so I was always interested in TV and movies and especially movie production. And uh, I think I got the acting bug when I saw that they were shooting Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox in Cleveland, Ohio. And they had um, some trials and things like that. And I was like, I remember asking my mom, I said, wow, can I do that? And she said, well, yeah, you can. You got to go to school and then you have to move to California and then you can do whatever you want. And I remember thinking, my godmother lives out there. And I said, so, mommy, if something happened to you and daddy, I would go and live with Brenda, right? And she said, well, th- listen, we don't have to die for you to go to California. But, you know, listen, I was ambitious. Um, but I went to school and, and studied a little bit of theater and I ended up out there. I don't know. I don't think I felt the way a lot of people do now where people just want to be famous. Right. I think um, it, the entire process was exciting to me. Um, so that's why I studied in school. And then when I got out here, um, I was able to land an internship, uh, at Warner brothers for a show called living single. Yeah. And I worked with Queen Latifah and John Hinton and TC Carson and Kim Fields and Kim Coles and Eric Alexander every day for like six years. Wow. Um, and so I got to see a good part of what production was like. Um, and also see them on stage every day and see what acting was like in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, being around them, they're all like, you know, big brothers and sisters. So it was great to be able to uh, see how the world worked and then uh, try my hand at it later. Yeah, I love that. And I tell you, you've been on our screens for so long and we love the name. You can, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. I cannot with this man. He said, cannot. you've been on the Andy Griffin show. <laughs> I remember watching you in the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, because I saw you in black and white. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, way back in the day. How old you are. Yes, yes, (laughs) yes. You're only, what, two years older than me. That's all all good in the hood. Okay. So, you know, that's it. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) This dude right here, I tell you. Well, I tell you, you've been on our, our screens for for a while, such as um, Sister Sister, the Parkers, and currently Grey's Anatomy and How to Get With Murder, those type of shows. So does versatility matter in this business that you've been in for so long? Yeah, you know what, Michael, you should be as diverse as you can be, um, not with just acting, but in life. The more things you can do, mm-hmm. um, the more things you can do. 
um, whether it's at your job, you know, if you can do multiple things. Um, in this business, what I learned is um, you do whatever they let you do. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you audition for the stuff that you want. Mm -hmm. um, but most actors, we spend our lives auditioning rather than acting. So as much as like, oh, I'm an actor, I would never do that. Mm -hmm. We audition constantly for things and you see us, you know, when we actually book the job. Right. Um, but it helps if you're good with comedy and drama and other things like that. So as versatile as you could be, sure. It's uh, if you can be a Swiss army knife out here and in life, it always helps, but it's definitely important out here. Okay, cool. And at what point in your acting career did you get the feeling of, you know, I made it. I think I'm kind of good at this. I made it. Uh, let me check my calendar to see if that date has come up yet. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know, you know, you'd have to talk to, to other actors too, but I think, I think you don't ever think you've made it because there's always something else that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's weird, like actors, some actors want to produce and some actors move into directing and then they do right. other things like that. And so you might say, yeah, okay, I can hang my head on acting and do things like that. But I don't, I don't know if you've ever said, yep, I made it. Cause I feel like once you do that, mm -hmm. I think it's real easy for people to dislike you because you feel like, well, yeah, I don't need you guys anymore. I'm as far as I'm going to be. You could be happy with your career, um, uh, which I am. And, you know, I'm still working on it. But I don't know. To say, yep, pretty presumptuous. And I wouldn't want to tell God, yeah, I don't need your help anymore. I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'll, right. see you, I'll just see you on Sundays, bro. So I, I don't want to do that. But I think... Uh, you're always working hard. You can be happy with the things you've accomplished and the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. But once you say you made it, um, I think that's when you, that's when you're hanging it up and you're done. So I don't want to say I've made you dead. I still want to keep working. I like that. I like that. And I've asked that question several times and persons actually give me a concrete answer, but from your response, it's like a work in progress, right? We're continuously, we're continuing yeah. to figure it out. I like yeah, well, I mean, as an adult, like, you might say, okay, what point did you feel like you were grown? There might be time, well, I guess I could drink legally, or I could rent a car, or... I <laughs> Let me check my calendar. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, listen, it's different for everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, there are definitely some things that I'm proud of, but um, I, I'm not done, and I don't want to say that yet, uh, just because there's, there's just more that I, that I want to do. Yeah. Um, and I think if you're always hungry and working on improving yourself and trying to be the best version of yourself mm -hmm. <clears throat> professionally and personally, you never really make it because mm -hmm. you, you just get wiser and yes. more wily yeah. and yeah. maybe more creative. Yeah. So. Right. And, you know, everything that we do, um, TJ, is a craft, right? We all have different crafts in life. Yeah. And so each of us has that unique style of learning our craft and maturing in our craft. What does that look like for you? Um, I do, well, what I do now is I always try to do readings to stay sharp, mm -hmm. um, especially now because um, you can't, I used to do a, a bunch of theater with Ted Lange. Um, I don't know if you remember Isaac from The Love Book. I mean, he tends yeah. to hate that, but that's what everybody knows in this book. Yeah. Yeah, but Ted was always writing plays. And, uh, and he was also and on That's My Mama, um, correct? A lot of them. Yeah, I, yeah, he was. Wow, look at you. Yeah, I love yeah, the older sitcoms. Um, yeah. Um, so Ted started writing plays, and he was always been great with me, so I got to be the lead in, I think, almost all of his plays. But that's a great way to stay sharp in terms of uh, me getting energy from people. Classes are always great, but I always feel like it's better to actually do it. Because if you're going to class, you're sitting there and sure you have classmates and you can work out a scene do that stuff. But it's not the same as being on stage in front of somebody else with a script or a text. So, mm -hmm. And I also do readings, which is very popular now, like Zoom readings, because people have table reads and all that stuff just to stay sharp. But again... It's a craft and there are a hundred people that are as good as me, but there are probably a thousand people that are better than me. At least that's my mindset. And so I need to keep working for the people that could be in the rear view mirror or the people that I'm trying to catch that are already ahead of me. 
Um, so it's, I think it's just a mindset. I always want to work, you know, when we're growing up, tying your shoe is a tough thing. Now you don't even think about it. So I want to get to the point where I can absorb material and become a character without even thinking about it. So. Oh, yes. Yes. I'm going to blow your mind. Okay. Get this. So okay. I interviewed right. Trinice from American Idol. She was on season two and she was telling me okay. that she ran into Stevie Wonder and he said to her that he still takes vocal lessons, even in being in the industry for over 40 years. That's, but look, that's what, that's the staying power of Stevie. Who's he taking lessons from? I don't know. But that's, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's, that's, but yeah. That's so humbling though. Yeah. Yeah. Because look, he's a perfect example. Stevie isn't going to tell you, yeah, I made it. I'm good. Because yeah. he could say, I made it. I'm done. But the fact that he's um, taking lessons, I love that. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow. So it just blew my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh. So yeah. Yes still mature his craft and work on himself right why can't i why can't you why can't person that are watching because we know that it's our craft we know it's our passion we know it's our thing right so let's continue to be the best that we can be until they put us down on the in dirt right <laughs> <laughs> and then be the death best dead person you've ever seen that's yeah. it i'm no, still hitting records I'm still, I'm still doing it yeah Don't worry. <laughs> that's well, you're work. right. Take the ego out of it. Take the ego out of it and keep yeah. working. But wow, wow, thank you for that. That's uh, yeah. anytime I feel like I'm too good for something, I will think of that. Definitely. I'm still gonna be too good for it, but I'm gonna think of that. Don't no, you. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, that's TJ, y'all. <laughs> Hi, uh, yeah. So, you know that um, the persons, I heard persons say that we live, they live in the dream, right? They're living the dream, all that kind of good stuff. So, I feel like they they mark that with milestones in their life. I've accomplished this, now I'm going to the next big thing that I want to achieve in life. And it keeps going and going and going. TJ, what is your next big dream? Um, it's actually perfect timing. Um, within the past three weeks, I got some news. I've been working on a project uh, for climate change. And I guess I'll tell the story backwards so that you can ask questions. But uh, after a series of meetings and some planning and some other stuff, uh, a lot of work online with research, I am the founder and the head of the global response team for Take Action Global. And, and it's an environmental company um, or organization that teaches kids about the values of climate change and other things like that. And so what I do, or what uh, my team and I do, we respond to climate uh, situations. They could be uh, catastrophes, or they could be celebrations, whatever it is. But we go <clears throat> fly anywhere in the world. Um, we cover whatever happened. So if there was like, I don't know, a flood in Thailand, we would go, if it has to do with water and climate, we would go, we would chronicle the story, see what happened, talk to people out there, and then I would create uh, maybe a five to seven minute video uh, for them to turn into a lesson plan. And then that lesson plan is then dispersed to 130 countries uh, to kids around the globe. And so they, they learn about it. So that's kind of my job. I guess you could say I'm a makeshift superhero for climate action now so i just want to make taking care of the environment <clears throat> something that's cool and adventurous mm -hmm. and fun instead of oh i have a bottle let me just throw it away it's boring right. i want to make it cool and fun for kids so it's something that they can say hey we can take ownership of this and learn about something and this guy's making it fun and cool and exciting so that's what i'm doing um, that is amazing yeah amazing. yeah i was telling a friend of mine about it and she was at uh, my friend kina and she was like, wait, what, wait, what movie is this? And I was like, it's no, Kina, it's, it's, Hunter this ain't a movie, dog. So, movie. So, no, I'm just, yeah. Um, I was like, no, this is, it's me. I'm going to be doing all this stuff. And she was like, yeah, you can't ever sit still. Um, so it'll be fun. But I'm really thankful to the people at TakeActionGlobal.org, um, Dr. Jen Williams, Coon Timmers, Michael, uh, Jasmine, Isaiah, all the people that are mm -hmm. over there that uh, are making this happen. But uh, I think we're going to do some big things and I'll be posting about it 
we're supposed to go to Kenya and then Dominica, and then looks like we might be going to England to do some stuff. So it's uh, it's going to be an adventure, but um, I'm really excited. So that's the next <clears throat> big thing. So during the day, you know, I was telling my mom, I said, well, even Batman and Superman had day jobs. So I'm going to obviously still keep acting. Yeah. But at night, I'll be flying around the world trying to battle climate uh, change and educate kids about it. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. So, so it's a perfect question. Right. Oh my gosh. So how is this going to work as in the educating part? Will you be doing things via um, virtually or will you be actually going to these places? Like how does, how's that working? Yeah, I hate virtual. I mean, listen, we, we have to do it <clears throat> and over time and distance. It, it makes sense. Yeah. I hate virtual stuff. And I told him that. And I got the idea because we were, I was watching a webinar that they had that lasted um, almost nine hours. It was great. But I remember seeing how tired the hosts were. And I thought the kids in China can't see the kids in Africa because of the time change. And all that stuff. They need somebody that can bridge the gap and say, hey, here's a project that these kids did. We can bring it to you and create this video. So basically, you know, what the crew and I will do, we'll show up like if we talk about the show in England. They want to do an episode about plastic, where it's from, how it affects the environment in the water. Well, I could talk to somebody here or a scientist, but that's boring. So it's more exciting if I go and chronicle, hey, I'm at the airport and we're going to blah, blah, blah university to talk to this professor and go into the laboratory and see how plastic is made in a lab and actually show the kids and then um, kind of pair them up with a corporation that also wants to help or they're you know, being uh, environmentally responsible. Um, maybe they want to give away uh, Tupperware that is made from beeswax or Adidas if they want to give away some of their shoes because they're you know trying to be um, uh, environmentally friendly, whatever it is, just to kind of marry a corporation with young minds because ultimately they're going to control what happens. Right. Um, but we'll do all that, wrap it up in a nice, neat little video and um, put it on their tag global network and then out it goes. So... We'll get a bunch of eyes, but I'm excited about it, especially the reach, because 130 countries around the world is huge. And you get to reach a lot of kids and a lot of students and a lot of teachers. So it's a big job that uh, I'm up for. That's awesome. Wow, <laughs> that is major, man. That is Thanks. amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. So on the other side of the realm, because that's your night job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your day job, anything new and exciting happening there? Uh, yeah, I may have some stuff. Well, how about this? I, I did a movie last year in the Virgin Islands. It's called Island Stranger. Mm -hmm. uh, it was produced, written, and directed by uh, my friend Dwayne Copeland. That's, it was supposed to come out last year, um, but because of COVID, there were some hiccups and other things are happening. Um, but I'm not sure if it's going to come out this year or not. Uh, I had a chat with him a few days ago, and he's working on it. Um, there's that. And then I'm uh, constantly auditioning for stuff. Mm -hmm. um I, I guess you'll know if i if i post about it you'll know if you see me on there i don't know if i'm allowed to say it or not but um there's some stuff happening there's stuff that happening okay. um they with the own network maybe who knows um and uh what else oh maybe with cbs so we'll see we'll see we'll see, we'll see. but that's it girl he ain't no way he wouldn't know but he was at chick-fil-a that's it <laughs> no so yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that is amazing. You're like, you can't sit still. When do you sleep? You know what? I have to do a better job. That actually, it's funny you say that. I'm also uh, doing some uh, training for Adidas. They chose me to do the Adidas Sports Science team. Chose me to um, train and monitor my uh, stats for a band called Whoop. I feel like it's a commercial. W H O O P. And they monitor your exercise, um, your recovery, and your sleep. And Michael, my sleep is horrible, particularly because I've been busy, you know, with this new project. But it'll tell you how long you slept, how long you need to sleep. And I, the past couple of weeks, it's been like five hours, and it needs to be like around eight or nine, especially to recover to do all the stuff I'm doing. So I'm running hill sprints and doing all this other stuff. And not really giving my body a chance to recover, only because I feel like, no, I got to be stronger. I got to be ready for anything that happens in the world. Right. But I'm not sleeping. Right. So you are correct. I am not sleeping, but I need to do more of it. And uh, yeah, I need to figure that out. So, yes, thank you for reminding me. You and Luke. There so if you haven't learned anything 
else in talking with me know that you need to sleep, TJ. I will do that. I yes. will. And, and that was the reason of this interview. That's it's an reason. invention. We want you to go to sleep. There we go. We yes, can. we do. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. I'm going to start right now. <laughs> oh, my God. You better wake up, Bo. <laughs> but you keep on, uh -uh, I'll rest my eyes. Uh, don't, don't, change, don't change that. I'm watching that. You the best. I'm the best. You must go to sleep. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> so, and uh, the course of your life, you can, you've done so many different things, and you continuously, as you stated, you're doing so much. How do you want to be remembered? What is that legacy that you want to leave look like for you? Um, I love that question. I just want to remember that somebody that never was affected by the moment. Mm -hmm. um, there's a quote that I love. I don't know who said it, but um, it, it basically says, um, in order to be great, greatness requires that you handle success and adversity the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And I also want people to know that I generally cared about them. Like life is, the stuff we do is exciting and fun. But I ultimately want to care more about people than I do about, you know, credits in a movie or likes on social media or whatever it is. I just want people to go, no, nah, he was always cool with me. It didn't matter where it was or what he was doing. He was always the same. And so I, I try to do that with everybody. So that's that's my ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. um, and if I could be remembered as the guy who was always the same and he treated me the same, that that's what I want. I love, I love that. I love it, TJ. How can I find Don't nobody social... care. <laughs> I care. <laughs> Thank you. You care, and I'm gonna go to sleep. I've got, I've got my orders. How can they find you on social media before you close your eyes? Uh, TJ in action. That's what that is. Uh, or you can Google my name, and stuff will come up. And I think you'll see more about Take Action Global uh, at some point as they rebrand and launch all that stuff. Um, geez, that sounded awful. Yeah, Google me. Ooh, you ain't making a lot of friends, my brother. No, no, no. Um, yeah, T in action, T E E J I N A C T I O N at with Instagram. Well, I was getting ready to say at Instagram.com. And uh no, that's that's my handle. Or you can just uh, I think if you do look me up, Thomas Anthony Jones, it'll show some of the stuff that's on there. So yeah, man. That's All it. righty, you heard it here. It is Thomas Anthony Jones. TJ, my new best hey. friend, y'all, my new best friend. <laughs> Thank I'll you for being with thing. us today. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, bro. This is so much fun. You made it so easy. So, yeah, I'm so excited to, to be here. Now. I, man, thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome. We're right back. Next, we have the Fantasia impersonator, Javelin DeBose. We'll be right back. What's up, y'all? I'm Leon Frierson, former cast member from Nickelodeon's All That and co-host of the Prime Nostalgia Podcast. And I'm here to ask you to join me in watching the Michael Finkley Show weekly on YouTube. Now, I've been on the show, so I definitely know it's a platform where you'll be educated, informed, and inspired. Now, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on YouTube. my body and my crib. flexible and she is a multitasker she is a wife a mom she is city councilwoman she yeah when i was growing up mom worked outside the house and so my dad was an entrepreneur i saw him leaving early in the morning or late at nights to go meet with clients and he was always one who told me you know if you show up on time you're late I just admire how she's able to not only juggle the demands of her jobs, but keep her family really first. The outstanding thing about the Isaac family is their noble contributions to improving the quality of life for our Colombians and people all over this state. I 
I, Tamika Isaac, do Solomon swear. Discharge the duties thereof. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and best wishes. I first ran because I saw a need, I saw a void that needed to be filled, a voice uh, that wasn't there. And over the last several years, I feel like I've been able to be that voice. So often as women in whatever spaces that we're in, um, we are often discounted because we're a mom or we're a wife or we have this career. And she's an everyday woman who shows women what excellence looks like. She has walked the walk of being a small business person, of being a parent, of sending her kids to school. Columbia is a great place, and we have done a lot in the last few years as far as law enforcement. But law enforcement can't do everything, nor should it do everything. We have to really expand upon the tools, technology, and community policing, investing in our communities uh, so that law enforcement is a partner with our communities. Being a Columbia native, I've seen the way this city has grown. It's grown to the point that sometimes not everybody's been a part of that growth. I want to make sure that communities, specifically communities of color, make sure that they are part of Columbia's present and its future. I want to have a climate plan for this city that not only helps us be sustainable, but also helps provide opportunities for folks in the workforce. There are so many opportunities to take advantage of technology, uh, green energy. I want to be the the advocate for growing our city and being on the forefront, not just looking at what other cities are doing and following them, but being the leader. If you don't have the right leadership, you're going to miss a lot of opportunities. I think having a woman as mayor of the city of Columbia is long overdue. I'm Tamika Isaac Devine, and I'm running for mayor of the city of Columbia. I'm just not college material. I am tired of school. I'm just not sure what I want to do after graduation. Sound familiar? Welcome to the Prelo Educational Institute. Our focus is to help young people prepare for life after high school. It's never too early to start planting the seed for education, career, and life overall. The Prelo Educational Institute is made up of the following two products. The first product is the book titled, I Ain't Going to College, A Guide for Life After High School. This is the first book of a series that introduces middle and high school students to a young man struggling to find his way and make the decision about whether attending college is the right choice for him or not. The book has questions inside and a supplemental curriculum can also be purchased. The newest product from the Prelo Educational Institute is our online course titled Preparing for Life After High School. In this course, students will learn about decision making, self-confidence, accountability, self-awareness, and many other topics that speak to social-emotional learning. Young people will read a story about a young man who never gave up no matter what the circumstances were. The course is interactive and has questions, quizzes, and video. Do not wait until your child or student is a senior in high school to start planning. Enroll today. To enroll and learn more, please visit www.speakerauthormarlow.com. Everybody, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Y'all, my next guest, I am so excited to have, I tell you, the Fantasia impersonator, Javelin DeVos. Javelin, thank you for being with us today. For having me. You're How very are you? welcome. I am great. I'm awesome. I'm <laughs> fantastic. I, I had to tell this story. So I was cruising these YouTube streets and I saw this awesome video uh, of Fantasia. She was just getting in. I'm like, okay, come on, Tate. But I look slow. So I'm like, no, that, that's not Fantasia. That, mm -hmm. that, that was you. That yes. was you. <laughs> so I'm just like, kudos <laughs> to you. I'm like, you did that thing. So thank you. When did this entertainment phase start way back when in Hartsville, South Carolina? Mm -hmm. I'm originally from Hartsville, South Carolina. Um, I live in Atlanta now, but um, I'm originally from South Carolina. Um, I grew up in the church. Um, I grew up um, knowing that there was something um, about me as far as entertainment. Um, of course, I was a 
a person that um loved to entertain. I, I love right. knew that I was going to be something that in the arts. Mm-hmm. I knew there was something. I didn't tap into it. Um, I knew that um I was going to be in that realm of entertainment. I grew up in the church. I grew up um, miming. I was in the choir. Um, my spiritual parents um, took me around um, to different churches, um, miming and entertaining as far as um, the church was concerned. Um, once that happened, I knew there was something about me. I love um, entertaining people. I knew, love when people come up to me and tell me that, um, oh, you bless me um, when you're doing your miming and doing all of that. So I knew there was something about me as far as that was concerned. Right. Right. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. And we see that you do it so well as Fantasia. When did mm-hmm. this start for you? Um, female impersonation started for me when I moved to Georgia um, mm-hmm. in well, my senior year in high school. I did a pretty little stint in college. I um, found out that wasn't for me. Um, once I did that, um, I did a little talent show in Augusta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um Proud over, started doing uh, female impersonation there. Um, once I did that in 2016, I came back to Augusta, Georgia after I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And I did it, um, I went to entertainment there. And I passed. once I did that in 2016, I did Fantasia. Mm-hmm. I had a video, video that went viral. And once I did that, I was like, you know what? This is something that I can actually make a career off of so once I started doing that, um, I joined a um, impersonation. Um, what can I call it? A per- impersonation company um, in DC with Shakrita Lee with Van Hook Productions. When I started doing that, and it's been going good since then. I've been on and off doing it because I never really took it like, oh, uh, let's let's make a career out of it, right? But once I started getting into it and really, uh, you know what, this can be something that could be lucrative for me. Um, I had the talent. I have I had the time to actually um, form a craft that I can actually get into and actually um, be able to, excuse me, um, make money off of right. and lucrative for me. So it started there. Yes. Amazing. And I'm not, you have it down packed from the quivers to the shakes. Like, how do you study it, her? It, it it takes a it takes a lot of discipline, especially mm-hmm. with um celebrity impersonation. Right. Be able to have mannerisms down, be able to be able to have that essence of that individual. Right. And it's not trying to be her, it's not be trying to um be oh, oh, I'm thick, I'm Fantasia, and this and other. No, right. it's just it's art. Mm, it's I like that. I like that. Big fans. Um, so when I, I do it, I show my tribute to her. So right now, I remember you telling me a story. You had the opportunity to actually meet Fantasia. Tell us about that. Oh my god! <laughs> you want to go into, <laughs> into Let's all go of into that. that? Yeah. And together with a group of Fantasia fans, we said, okay, she's coming to Atlanta. I was in Atlanta at, the, at that time. She's coming to Atlanta. We're going to get together. We're going to go to um, the concert. We're going to get VIP, of course. You can't meet Fantasia without going to VIP. So we did VIP. I was in the line. Um, her hairdresser noticed me in the line. So he was like, oh, she's been talking about you all night. And da 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 da. I guess we were in a, we were in a, were in a chat um, mm-hmm. previously prior to the concert and you know i'm this keeps i keep it real as far as the chat concerned i i keep it real so i'm known as the troublemaker tation <laughs> so on um, what she told me the line and i went up to meet her mm-hmm. oh i was already nervous because it's my first time meeting her yeah. so i'm buying shots for everybody i'm buying shots for everybody i'm like you know what if i'm gonna be meeting fantasia i'm gonna make sure my nerves are good <laughs> so when so that corner and saw her mm-hmm. it was just like oh my god i'm meeting someone that i impersonate i'm i'm meeting someone that i impersonate and it she's so sweet so humble so down to earth somebody that you can actually look up to we don't have a lot of people that we can look up to somebody that's been through something somebody has been through life knowing that they can come out of the other end just knowing that they've 
contribute to the community. And that's what I look up from. That's why I look up for her. That is amazing. And as you perform, you perform under the stage name La Diva Monet. Uh, what are some of the, the places that you've been thus far as Fantasia? Oh, my goodness. Um, of course, I've been here in Atlanta. I've been to D.C., um, Chicago, um, St. Louis. Um, this is my favorite, my absolute favorite place to go is D.C. I love D.C. I love Baltimore. It's just, oh, my gosh, this traveling, this one of the things I like to do is travel and spread my talent. Yes. Gotcha. Awesome. And where are some places that you're going in the future? In the future, um, I'm actually trying to get a one woman show off of the ground, branding that, being able to just showcase my talent with that. Um, I'm trying really hard to get it off the ground. It's going to happen because I'm going to have faith that it's going to happen for me. So that's what I'm trying to do now. So it should, mm-hmm. it's going to I have faith in myself. <laughs> Let me know and I will be right there. On the front right. row. Let me right. know. Let me know. How can they find you on social media? Um, on social media outlets, all social medias. I'm Ladiva Monet, um, the Fantasia Impersonator. You can go on YouTube, type in the Fantasia Impersonator, i uh, pop up. Um, on Facebook, like I said, I'm Ladiva Monet. You can find me there. Subscribe, like, do all of that. And I look forward to meeting all of you if when the world opens up again. That's it. That's it. But we're not finished yet. La Diva Monet performs next right here on the Michael Finkley Show. Don't you go away. <laughs> Coming up, La Diva Monet performs. We'll be right back. Calling all trio, gear up, jag, and other college readiness organizations. Hello everybody, it's Finkley with the Finkley Experience. I am here to offer you information about our College Readiness Cohort Series. This College Readiness Series includes college applications, SAT, ACT prep, scholarships, financial aid, the mental mind state, HBCU versus PWI versus technical colleges, and so much more. You know this is helpful because it's actually like making me change my college plan. Really? If you're interested, visit our website, thefinkleyexperience.com, or just email us at michael at thefinkleyexperience.com. We're looking forward to working with you. Need a little motivation? Timothy Clifton is with us every week on Mondays to get your week started with a little motivation. All here on The Michael Finkley Show. Performing Fantasia's When I See You, it is La Diva Monet. Uh, I put your picture on my mirror. Start to blush when somebody says your name. Hey, in my stomach, there's a pain. So you walk in my direction, I go the other way. Yeah, I start to stutter when I speak. Try to stand, but my knees go weak. Baby, what's happening to me? In the dark, can you tell me what? in the zone, so I say I'm not home, when I hear my favorite song, should I send an email at home, I wonder if you know, do you have a clue, yeah, I lay my head on my pillow, got me staring out the window, wish on the star for a sign, what's the reason?
Get up. Get on up now. Everybody in the studio, come on now. Come on. Everybody just. Get on up. Ooh, 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 yeah. Oh, good God Almighty, good God Almighty, y'all. Get on up now. Everybody that's listening right now, we want you to party with us. Come on. What's up, everybody? This is Ryan Toby. You know me from Sister Act 2, Mr. Oh Happy Day, and the hit R&B group City High. I'm welcoming everybody to join and tune into the Michael Finkley Show on YouTube and also on the Greater Works Network on Roku TV. Don't forget to subscribe. On the next Michael Finkley. You loved her as Thelma Evans in Good Times. Now Finkley has her. Bernadette Stannis is with us. Next Finkley. Friday. Everybody, welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. I hope that you were entertained. I hope that you were inspired by our guests. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you so much, Javelin, for being with us today, telling your stories, uh, performing, come through, come through. Thank you so much for being with us today. Really appreciate you. On the next Michael Finkley, y'all, y'all remember as Delma Evans of Good Times. Lord, come on, y'all. She is here in the building with us on Friday. Burnett Stannis is with us. It's another show you don't want to miss. Come on. Promise you it's going to be a good one. I promise you. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Michael Finkler Show. Ring that bell for notification. We'll send you an email saying, hey, new content's uploaded. Please listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And also, for up-to-date information about what we do here on the Michael Finkler Show, please visit our website at michaelfinkleyshow.com. Thank you so much for watching, and guess what? We'll see you on Friday. Have a good one. 